Hey all you people, what's going on? Today we have a 2009 Ford F-150 Platinum and today we're gonna see how well it's aged. So I'll run through a few of the issues that we've had with this. Now this is the infamous Triton 5.4 liter V8. The five liter is superior in every regard, power, efficiency, and reliability. But the 5.4 wasn't necessarily the worst engine either. My parents have owned this truck since 2011 and they haven't done too much to it. Um, the only thing they have done is these kind of eBay looking wheels uh, and some nice KO2s which provide plenty of grip. And just walking around the car, you can see that there's some wear and tear here. You know, it's been used for its intended purposes. It's a truck. You know, we've got a little bit of cab rot going on here. You know, the emblems are faded and there's plenty of scratches and dings to be seen around the cab. So the engine's all warmed up. Why don't we take it for a ride and I'll tell you the pros and cons. All right. Real quick, if you guys aren't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing, consider liking the video, commenting, ask me a question if you want to. Plenty of room for my hat. All right, the first thing I wanna say is, generally, the seats, uh, especially in the Platinum, are very comfortable. There are a ton of ways to adjust these. This one, the driver's seat is actually memory, so you can set it to, I won. Oh, that is not me, that is not me. Oh, Jesus, squishing my hat. But the driving position isn't quite as customizable as you might want. The steering wheel is only tilt, it's not telescope. But we do have telescoping gas and brake pedals, which helps for shorter drivers, that's for sure. Like my mother, who is the owner of this truck actually. I think this joke has run its course, all right. So with the Platinum, you get this lovely interior, uh, a ton of fake wood, a ton of fake aluminum and a really terrific Sony sound system in here. There's tweeters here, there's tweeters on the sides, um, an independent subwoofer underneath the back seat. The sync system from 2009 has become a bit outdated. What else did you expect? You know, the Bluetooth features are cumbersome and the rear view camera, I'd say it's about the same quality as the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander. <laughs> Front seats are heated and cooled. The cooled seat setting basically just sucks your butt through the perforated seats here. This does have rain sensing wipers. Um, they don't work super well. In general, I love the steering wheel. Visibility is pretty good out of it, actually. You might be familiar with Fords. They have this little dip in the windowsill here, which allows you to see the mirror better. Driving position after you get yourself comfortable is good. Clear view at the front here. <laughs> The uh, Platinum actually handles really well stock because it came with lower profile tires. But since uh, my folks upgraded upgraded to the KO2s here, um, handling has decreased slightly, but you know, traction has increased. The KO2s also help this ride a little better than with the stock tires. I remember the ride being pretty stiff when my folks first got this in 2011, and it still is relatively stiff. It has independent front suspension, which helps, but you know, you got a light, back, solid rear axle, and a lot of truck. <laughs> so this is before the F-150 went to an aluminum body, which saved, I think it was about 800 pounds from the total curb weight. So this bad boy is heavy and you can feel it when you're driving it. It is heavy, but it's by no means cumbersome. All right, we're going under a little bridge here. Yeah, it still rides stiff. It's a little jittery and bouncy over bumps. My rolls that I've gained during COVID are perfectly illustrating that. We've taken this on plenty of dirt roads up in New Hampshire, up in Maine. A combo of the solid rear axle, stiff suspension, and a light truck bed. It does tend to skip out in the turns, especially if you're in dirt. Noise levels, very quiet in this truck. Ford has for a while been really good with their noise, vibration, harshness levels. They add a lot of insulation to make the rides more comfortable and quiet. You know, steering's on the slower side, but you, you want sort of light, easy steering, especially if you're towing a trailer. <laughs> Throttle response isn't too great. This engine, for all like the negative stuff you hear about this engine, it's it's not that bad. It really isn't. I may have mentioned that the five liter Coyote V8 was more efficient than this engine. 
But for the time, 11, 12 years ago, this engine wasn't that bad. We're averaging around 15 miles a gallon combined. Most of what makes this truck feel sluggish is the transmission and the gearing. So real quick, I'll do a zero to 60 and see how, that was my four jack in the back. So real quick, I'll do a zero to 60 and I'll see how this thing gets up to speed. I will turn off the traction control for this. I'll launch it in two wheel drive. Those KO2s grip pretty well, so. And we're in the rain too. So as you can see, this does get up to speed. It's just enough power. As far as the looks of this truck go, I do think that the look of F-150s are, are kind of timeless. If this were my personal truck, I probably would have gone with a slightly smaller wheel diameter and a thicker sidewall in the KO2s uh, to add to that more aggressive look. And I also think that it would have softened the ride just a little bit more, <laughs> which going over these bumps would be welcome. Now let's talk about towing. I believe that when this came out, Ford said the max towing capacity was around 11,400 pounds, which if I look at the now and see a 11,400 pound trailer on the back of this F-150, I'm gonna say that this Triton would really be struggling. My folks got this to tow their camper, which is when loaded up around 8,000 pounds, which is well within the capacity range of this F-150. And it, it did tow that very well. If you all are looking to buy one of these uh, and you're looking to tow more than about 9,000 pounds, see if you can stretch your budget just a little bit to get one of the Coyote V8s from 2011 and up. But yeah, this transmission and gearing don't do this engine any favors. You can put tow haul mode on, which keeps up the RPM a little bit um, and doesn't shift into overdrive. It'll also engine brake a little bit. I don't know if it was an option or not, but this did not come with a trailer brake installed. My parents had a trailer brake installed here. It wasn't too difficult. Overall, the suspension uh, has held up pretty well with time. Sure, it's not really the most modern, but a lot of vehicles by 11, 12 years old, especially American vehicles, would need a serious suspension refit if you wanted to retain any sort of handling capability. Right now, we're close to 164,000 miles. Um, you often see these trucks, and most trucks for that matter, breaching 200,000 miles plus. So I don't have much worry that this is gonna get to 200, 220,000 miles with a few caveats. There's a couple design flaws with the 5.4 Triton, and for this video, I'm gonna be talking more so about the three valve Triton. The engine's main flaw lies in its oil circulation. The passageways that allow the oil to flow through the different parts of the engine and make sure that they're lubricated were designed to be too narrow, which can lead to oil starvation in certain parts of the engine. This is specifically why so many people have cam phaser failures in their Tritons. Now, although this is a design flaw, the issue can usually be deferred or prevented entirely by routine oil changes every 3,000 miles, even if you use high quality synthetic oil. It's only when the owner goes a little too long in an oil change that the passageways start to get gunked up. The deferred maintenance by the owners can lead to other internal wear, including timing chain guide wear. So the key to owning a more reliable Triton is by keeping the oil fresh and clean. A couple other design flaws with the three valve Tritons have to do with the spark plugs, which can vibrate loose and break. People have actually reported their spark plugs physically shooting out of their engines due to thread failure. The spark plugs themselves have these long aluminum tips that can physically react and bond with the steel inside the spark plug port, causing the plug to break when you try and remove it. One flaw with these engines that's pretty much impossible to prevent is the exhaust manifold gasket failures. This is caused by different expansion rates between the materials used in the headers and the exhaust ports. By consistently expanding and contrasting at different rates during engine warmups, the gaskets become worn and the manifolds themselves might even crack. So these are the major recurring problems of the late 5.4 Tritons. So how many of these problems have manifested in the F-150 that I'm driving? Well, so far only the exhaust manifold gaskets of needed replacement. Now you might be saying that's the only issue they've ever had with this engine. Yeah, it's the only issue they've ever had with this truck. Isn't that nuts? It, it's people ragging Ford for not being reliable, but in such a competitive market like the truck market, they have to be. One small issue is that the step rails tend to freeze over in really cold weather, especially when it's wet, but the issue resolves itself when the weather warms up. 
The frame is surprisingly rust-free, especially having spent its whole life in New England. But the corners of the cabs are starting to see a little bit of rot, and same with the rocker panels. I think the only other slight issue my parents have had was they brought it to Ford a while back and Ford had to reflash the transmission. I'm not sure. They didn't have to replace the transmission or do any repair, only reflash it and since it's been better. I am six feet tall and that's not really gonna play into effect here. Uh, this is what American cars do. I think it's a regulation. The front seats actually can't recline past a certain point because it's a safety thing. If you're far enough backwards and you get in a front end collision, you're just gonna whoo, right underneath your seatbelt. I think it's kind of dumb. This does it. My Mustang used to do that. My friend's Sierra does that as well. All right, we're gonna see if it'll sleep in the back seat. Sam, can you try and close the door? Ah! What do you think? No, you can't sleep like that. So mm -mm. let's try. All right. So now you're gonna slam it shut. Let's see if I'll fit, okay? We have one more option I'd like to try. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna work. This bed is the shortest bed configuration you can get because it has the longest cab configuration you can get with the F-150. Uh, it's around five and a half feet long. I have tried this though, and it will sleep me horizontally. Kitty corner, but it's not that comfortable. Uh, it did not pass the Will It Sleep and Also Hitting Car Guy segment. And of course, last but not least, I have to mention the four-wheel drive system. It's shift on the fly four-wheel drive. You have your two high, four high, and four low switch here. It's pretty quick to shift. It does have a limited slip rear end. And combined with these KO2s, the 4x4 in this truck is pretty kick-ass. Turn off the traction control, and I have bombed through a field of foot and a half deep snow once. So that was with the stock tires. So traction, not an issue. Ground clearance, also not an issue, especially thanks to the retracting step rails. I'd say if you can find one of these used, um, just know the limitations of it. You know, don't expect it to be a new truck, but I think it will serve you right if you take care of it. All right, everyone, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, consider liking the video. And I have plans to do a lot more of these how well has it aged videos where we look at older cars and see how well they've held up to the use and abuse that their owners have put them through. All right, take care. Bye-bye now.